uh, what was interesting about the format is that they bowled in two different bowling centers here and Ooh, wow. John missed another 10 pin. That's twice on that lane he's done that. And you can see his wife is kind of disappointed, but John, I'm sure, just can't believe it. Anyway, very very quickly, I'll get back and finish this format. It was uh, the, the eight games in here at Seminole Lanes, eight games at Sunshine Lanes, or Sunshine Bowl, excuse me, and then back here for the last eight games, and then, the, oh, of course, all the match play was played here at Seminole Lanes, and now we're back here on 23 and 24 for the telecast. Boy, that's a big miss there in that tempin. Well, we've just been uh, told by our producer that John Handigard did not miss a ten pin all week. Missed two in a game and a half here. Well, it's hard for me to believe it. Uh, it's not hard for me to believe he went all week without missing one, but it's hard, it's hard for me, even though I'm watching, to, to vision John Handigard missing two ten pins. It just doesn't happen very often. And that's really got Mr. Long pumped up see by that reaction there he knew he threw, made a good shot and it was a double and it increased the lead to 30 pins we're going to look at it again now we can see the scoreboard right there put a strike there by handy garden it's an even match with miss and it's a 30 pin difference right and we're going to stay live we're not going to show you that replay uh, right now this is the lane that's been the more difficult for all the players lane 23 seems to hook more he made a great move last time moving to the right giving the ball more room letting it swing back to the pocket and see if he does that again Gave it a lot of room. Got it back. Oh, he's he's comfortable out there. Well, Handyguard's in a position he better strike now or he's packing his bags and heading on to uh, Richmond. Well, again, I'm sure that the rest of the field, including Gary Dickinson, who's the next guy up, is kind of hoping that John's gone. I mean, he's not going to wish him any bad luck, but uh, I don't think he wants to bowl this guy. Well stays alive. <laughs> he always pointed. does, doesn't he? <laughs> well, it's the ninth frame, though. He's got to have this one roll. He's down by 20. Wants a re-rack. You know, a lot of times, you mentioned earlier in this match that Jim Long had, de had decided the player that's higher in the standings, as most of the people that are listening know, gets his choice of starting lanes, which actually means his choice of finishing lanes. And lane 23 has been the most difficult, and Jim Long just determined his own fate by deciding to finish in lane 23. But a lot of times, the reason they make that decision is they get to finish first. The player that finishes on the left lane will finish the match first and maybe can put pressure on the other guy in the 10th frame. And there's the biggest shot of the match for John Hanegard and it's the solid 10 pin. You know, I said he was down by 20. He was actually down by 30, so that uh, really had to have that one to keep himself alive. Now the best he can get is uh, 215 if he strikes it out. Well, it's still possibilities. There's two frames to play here for Jim Long. Anything can happen, especially in a difficult lane condition, and Jim Long's making them look easy. They're bowling on 37 feet of oil here, and it's tapered from the foul line all the way down to that 37-foot mark. So it's not what I'm saying. It's heavier oil in the first part of the lane, and as you get closer to the pin area, it tapers down to almost zero past 37 feet. And these pins are 3-pound-6 and 3-pound-7 ounce pins which by today's standard are not real heavy, right? Not with these bowling balls. You can see how the pins jump when the ball hits it. The, the ball's hit very hard and the pins are fairly light. Uh, actually, the striking power is, is better when the pins are heavier because uh, they stay lower. That was the basic lockup shot right there by Jim Wong. He's going to go on to face Gary Dickinson, so he takes care of one former senior player of the year, and he's going to face a new one when uh, Dickinson comes over or the current one at least. Yeah, they don't get any easier as you work your way up the stepladder finals here. Well, like you said, use the word comfortable. He does look very comfortable out there. He's making great. That one's inside of his target, and you can see the result there. He got that one two or three boards left of his target. And uh, never did give them enough room to get, but to, at this point, as you mentioned, this match is over. He's going to be in that 230, 240 bracket. Uh, a tremendous score for what the scores have been like all week long here. And, and what we saw in the opening match. Right. At the 3-6. Again, switches to this black ball. Has the spare. With a strike, he's going to be finished with 244. Excellent opening game. I keep talking about the scoring, Mike, this week. And uh, to give you an idea, our tournament leader, Bobby Knipple, 
averaged 210 to lead the tournament. Uh, Jim Long averaged 210 also, but they're all in that area, 210, 29, 208. Jim Long knocks out the four pin on the fill ball. John Handyguard bowled a good game, but the uh, sixth frame there was the, the big difference. John just finishing out the string, goes a little bit high. He's going to lose this match, but he'll be back. We know that in the future. 